The UK driving test pass rate across the country is currently 50%. And believe it or not, that's actually gone up. That means that one in two of you are going to fail a driving test first time. I don't know about you, but I do not like those odds. Now, the DVSA shows that in 2022, the number one reason for failing your driving test was observations at junctions. What's really interesting, though, is that this was exactly the same in 2021. And what about 2020? 2019. And this goes exactly the same all the way back down to 2008. And if you look at the rest of the top reasons for failing, these haven't changed much either. Lucky for you, after watching this video, you are going to know exactly what these reasons for failing are so you don't make those same mistakes as well. We're going to look at the top five reasons people actually fail their driving test and we're going to look at how we can actually avoid making these same mistakes. Now, as I mentioned before, the number one reason for failing your driving test in the UK is observations at junctions. If you've got a serious or dangerous fault for this, this means you've put someone else at risk. Essentially, you've pulled out on someone either on a roundabout, a crossroads, a T-junction, or on a dual carriageway. Best way to avoid this, don't pull out on people. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But we know there's more to it than that, so let's have a look at some ways that we can avoid doing this on our driving test. Basic rule is anytime you're approaching a roundabout, always slow the car down as much as you can get away with, and usually it's going to be second gear. And don't panic if you've gone slightly too slow. After all, you're approaching a roundabout. What's everyone expecting you to do? So I'll give you a very quick example of this. I can see the roundabout coming up. So check my central right mirror. I'm planning to turn right. I drop into second gear and I'm slowing right down to 15 miles an hour for this roundabout. I'm locking to the right. I can see it's clear, so I'm carrying up. The other crucial thing to remember about roundabouts and junctions is it's okay to let someone go. When you're a learner, sometimes people think, oh my God, I've missed a space, and they go into panic mode. This is normal. If you've never been on a roundabout before, you've driven across the country, you're going to need to let someone go to judge the speed. So if you're not too sure if you can go or not, and there's a car there, just wait. Wait, even if you miss a couple of gaps, you're going to start to get a better idea of when it is safe to go. On top of this, worst case scenario, if you have missed a few gaps, you might get a driving fault, which is nothing. But if you do pull out on someone and misjudge it, you're going to put people at risk, which means you're gonna instantly fail your driving test. So if in doubt, always wait. Worst case scenario, you're going to get a driving fault for hesitation. How many people have I had fail for hesitating on a roundabout? None. How many people have I had fail for pulling out on a roundabout? Plenty. There's your answer. After all, the driving test is all about safety. We don't want to run people over. We don't want to cause any accidents. It's far better to delay people slightly, delay yourself slightly, than take any risks. And the final thing to think about is if you do pull out on someone or you think, oh, that's a bit close, don't hang about. Get out of the way, get gone, put your foot down if need be. Because if you get out of the way of that person, you don't slow them down, the exam is still highly likely to pass you on your driving test. If this is helping, then don't forget to give that subscribe button a little nudge nudge in the right direction. Another really common issue we see with observations at roundabouts is we're very good with our observations looking left and right, but we actually look too much. And when the car starts to move, we're still looking left and right. And then the car ends up going across onto the wrong side of the road, which again is high risk. And that's going to cause a failing driving test. The second that car starts to move at the junction, you need to be looking in the direction that you're planning to go, because after all, our hands will follow where our eyes are looking. If you want to give yourself the best possible chance of passing your driving test first time or even second time or third time, have a look at my online driving course in the description below. It costs less than one driving lesson. Bit of a no-brainer if you ask me, but it's that simple. Less than the price of one driving lesson. Let's have a look at the next one. The number two reason for failing our driving test in the UK is not using our mirrors correctly. Well, what does this even mean? Put simply, it's about looking in the mirrors when you actually need to, not just randomly. Now, the problem with not checking your mirrors is, yes, it's generally only a minor in most situations, but if you're going on your driving test for 40 minutes, you could pass 30 or 40 cars. Well, five times not checking your mirrors, and this is going to very quickly turn into a serious fault. Easy way to avoid this is to think, anytime my car moves to the right across the road, I need to check my central and right mirror. And anytime my car moves to the left across the road, it's central left mirror. That includes turning left into a road, turning right into a road, any time this occurs, always two mirrors. That way you're never going to go wrong and that's what they'd call effective observations. Now there are two times that if you don't check your mirrors, you probably will get a serious fault on the first go and that is because it's a high risk situation. I'm gonna show you what they are now. The first one is when we're following the road ahead or turning right on a roundabout. As we come off that exit, we have to check that left mirror and window just to make sure there's not a sneaky car or sneaky bike trying to sneak in. 
The second one is as we enter a slip road and we're trying to join onto a dual carriageway, if we don't check in that right mirror and the blind spot, there could easily be a vehicle there, which means you're going to fail your test. The third biggest reason for failing the UK driving test is not having proper control of the steering. Well, this could really mean anything, couldn't it? But if you do this, it is going to be what it says on the tin. It's going to be something related to steering, which means chances are you've either hit the curb or you've misjudged your steering and you've gone onto the wrong side of the road. Here's a few examples. Most junctions are called bell mouth junctions. And they're called bell mouth junctions because they're shaped like the bell of a mouth or the mouth of a bell. This means if you're turning left at the junction, the curb is actually going to curve slightly to the left. Meaning when you drive away, it's going to be a lot easier for you to get up to speed and stay on your side of the road. It also means anyone behind you that's planning to turn right can possibly turn right at the same time as you. But they can't do this if you don't position yourself nice and close to the curb on the left. And if you don't do this, this means you're holding people up and chances are you're going to fail your driving test. The other big time that steering becomes an issue is again when we block traffic when we're trying to turn right from a main road into a side road. When we're turning right, we should be positioning nice and close to that central white line. If instead we make a mistake and either position ourselves in the middle of the road or actually on the left, we are again going to block the traffic behind us, meaning they can't get to where they need to go. And that's bad for us. Sometimes nerves just get the better of us, especially when we're on a driving test. And we could do some crazy things that we'd never normally do, such as driving into the curb. Use a reference point in your car. I'll explain how we create a reference point. So we're trying to figure out how to make a reference point to park next to the curb and not hit the curb, but also not be too far from the curb. Now I'll tell you how to do this step by step so you can do it in your car at home. Step one, we ask someone kindly to park our car for us nice and close to the curb. Step two, while we're in a normal seated position, we look at the point on the windscreen where our eyes are actually seeing the curb meet the windscreen. Now in most people's cars, you can use the window wiper, the, the section of the window wiper, when that's touching the curb, normally that means you're parked in a nice, nice cozy distance to the curb. In my car, unfortunately, you can't actually see it because the bonnet's in the way. So instead, what you do is you just get a little bit of sticky tape. In my car, I've just stuck that L there to remind people that it's left, but it's also the perfect point that meets the curb as well to show someone when they're parked nice and close to the curb. If that goes past the point and ends up sitting on the curb, then that means you're too close and chances are in my car, you've hit the curb. If it's too far, then chances are you are miles from the curb. So the sweet spot is sitting right on the curb. Now you can do that in your car just by sticking a bit of tape on the window as well. The second way is to look as far down the road as you can at the end of the curb, and that way you'll guide yourself into the curb nice and gently. If you look at the curb directly in front of you, what tends to happen is our hands follow our eyes. So we look at the curb and we end up driving straight into the curb. Instead, if you continue looking at the end of the road, you'll slowly guide your way towards the curb without actually ending up driving straight into it. The other thing to remember with this is we don't need to be kissing the curb. We can be a drain's width from the curb. Approximately half a meter would be acceptable. You'd still pass your driving test without an issue if you're that far from the curb. What you don't want to do is mount that curb. If you mount that curb, that is more than likely the end of your driving test. Now, the most common series Ding dong. Now the most common serious steering fault is when we end up meeting traffic. And the issue that we have is imagine this is a car and this is you. We end up driving too close to the car and at the very last second we pop out and go surprise. This means anyone that is coming towards you at the same time has no chance to react or move out the way slightly to give you space. It also makes it look to the passenger like you may very well drive into that parked car. So instead, what we do is we turn the banana around and we follow the pattern of the banana. We pull out from behind the parked car nice and early, giving ourselves a very clear view of what's ahead. It also gives anyone oncoming towards you a very clear view of you, meaning they can move across closer to the curb. And it shows the passenger, I am not going to drive into that car. Now, if you've seen the banana before with the meeting traffic situation, you will know that I've taken that from Conquer Driving. And what can I say? Why try and fix something if it's not broken? Fourth biggest reason in the UK for failing your driving test is incorrect positioning when turning right at junctions. Now remember junctions can be roundabouts, crossroads, pretty much anything where there's a new road. For roundabouts, the best way to do this is follow the basic rules. Here's an example. Now, of course, if there are road markings with arrows, always follow these. If there's not road markings, then we follow the basic rules of anything that is a right turn on a roundabout, we position ourselves on the right. If it's not considered a right turn, then we position ourselves on the left. 
even if it's one lane, we would still position in that way because it's going to show everyone exactly where we are going and what we are doing. And it's also going to mean that if the lane is wide enough for another car to leave at the same time as you, you are not hogging that space. It's also really important to remember that the driving test is all about safety, not about directions. So if you do position yourself in the left and it's too late to get over to the right on the roundabout and you're supposed to turn right, then the safest option is to go either left or follow in the road ahead wherever your lane is able to go. Because that is risk free. At that point, all you've then got to say to the examiner is I was in the wrong lane, so I've had to choose to go the wrong lane. Can you redirect? And you've acknowledged this then, and they're going to have no problem and not give you any fault at all. This also applies to those central lanes, which are called protected lanes. They're designed there for you to get into so the traffic behind you can continue on. But sometimes we don't get into them properly and a car still blocks the rest of the lane. The final heartbreaking fault that I see on driving tests far more than I'd like is the blind spot jack. And this is any time your car's in a parked position, be that after an emergency stop, angled start, hill start, just pulling over on the left, pulling over on the right, it doesn't matter. If your car is in a parked position where there's potential for someone to go around you, we need to have a 360 degree, degree look around the car. So we start off ideally on the slowest side, and I'm talking the side where there's least likely for danger to change quickly, which in this case is the curb. Look over there, mirror, 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 mirror on the wall, and a quick blind spot check over the shoulder there. If it's still clear, and I'm gonna get a pronto move on, then it's safe to go. Now you might be thinking, right, I'm on my driving test, I'm on this road where there's never anyone on this road. I know there's no one around me. The examiner knows there's no one around me, so what's the point in checking my blind spot? And you would be, correct maybe you don't feel like in that situation there is any point but this is the only opportunity that that examiner gets to see if you are actually understanding what you're supposed to be doing while driving on the road and if you're not going to check it now why would the examiner think you're going to check it when you go to morrison's aldi where the car park is rammed full of people now you are going to be pulled over on your driving test anywhere between three and eight times depending on if you are doing everything correctly or not so it's really important that you don't forget to check your blind spots. Well, you can see how important it is because it's the fifth biggest reason for failing your driving test. If you want to give yourself the best possible chance of passing your driving test first time or even second time or third time, have a look at my online driving course in the description below. It costs less than one driving lesson. And those are the five biggest reasons for people actually failing their driving test in the UK. If you've learned anything from those, don't forget to subscribe because I'm going to bring the next five out in the next few weeks. I am Josh, your driving instructor, and I'll see you through a window.